you've got ears? Of course you do. You're hearing me, aren't you? You know, those things on the side of your head do a whole lot more than hold up your hair. They're a very important part of your body, and mine too. And when they don't work right, you feel lousy. Ear problems can make you feel sore, dizzy, achy, and of course, it can affect your hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Eddie, and like you, I've had ear problems too. My doctor says I need ear tubes, even though I'm not quite sure what they are. I do know I want to keep from getting these infections over and over again. I like to find the best way to keep from getting these infections. That's why you and I are going to do a little research on ears. <laughs> oh, there you are. Come on in. Ready to get cracking? I've got my computer warmed up. Let's just type in ears and start a search. So what's up with ears anyways? Well, I know that like my skateboard here, they come in all kinds of different colors, shapes, and sizes. I went to this one kid, his ears were so big, they looked like tail from the space shuttle. All right, so I doctored the photo a little. But the truth is, ears are sort of like tail fins on an airplane. How's that? Well, tail fins on an airplane help keep it flying upright over its stable. Now, of course, the shape of your ears has nothing to do with aerodynamics, no matter how big or small they are. But there are tiny little parts of your ear that help keep your balance. So the same way, tail fins keep airplanes flying straight. If we were talking about an airplane or a jet, we call that remaining vertically stable. For a kid, we call it standing up without falling down. Okay, now you know ears do a whole lot more than help you listen to cool tunes. So how do I know so much about ears? Well, I kept getting these infections all the time, and my mom took me to the doctor. I wanted to know more about my ears, so I did a little internet research. Besides, I had a science project too, and ears sounded like a pretty good topic. Get it? Ears? Sounded? Good? <laughs> Anyways, it was pretty easy. I just used the internet and the school library, and before I knew it, I had everything I needed. You could have done it too. I even made friends with some doctors on the internet. Hey, maybe we can get in touch with them later. They know everything about ears. So anyways, what I found out was, it's really important to keep your ears working right. That's because ears work together with other parts of your body. You know, ears are important to hearing, but just think about this. If you can't hear words correctly, you probably won't be able to say them right. So your ears certainly affect speech. And as I said before, ears are important for keeping your balance. But get this, ears are also connected to your nose. Although I've never heard of anyone having a runny ear. You've had a cold, right? Sure you have. Well, you know how you feel when your hands stuff up? You're dizzy, you don't hear good. And sometimes there's this ringing in your ears. I hate that. All that stuff is happening because your ears are connected to your nose through passages called sinuses. But how about this? If your ears aren't working right, even your taste buds can be off. So there you go. Your ears affect a whole lot more than just your hearing. And that's a great reason to take good care of your ears. So how about we get in touch with those docs and shoot them some questions? Sound good? Oh yeah, first, let me do this. I'll show you a little bit of my science project on ears. It's cool. I borrowed my dad's camcorder and used an editing program on my computer. Believe it or not, I got an A. So here it is. The ear is made of three parts. Just kidding. Hey, I'm no professor. Let me tell you a little about the human ear. First, there are three main parts of the human ear. The outer ear, also known as the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Ever wonder how the whole process of hearing works? Well, listen up, I'll tell you. Hearing starts with the outside of our ear picking up and collecting the sound. Now, if we use our imagination, we can picture the ear as a funnel on its side, big and kind of round on the outside, narrowing down to the smallest point on the inside. The outside of our ear funnels sound down through the ear canal to the tympanic membrane and then to the inner ear. There's this thing called the tympanic membrane in the ear. That word sounds a lot like the name for a kettle drum. A timpani. You know, those big drums used by the orchestra. The tympanic membrane is also known as, guess what? The eardrum. Did you get the connection? 
eardrum, tympany, tympanic membrane. Think that's where they got the name? Anyways, so after these sounds leave the eardrum, they head to the middle ear. This part of the ear is kind of like those big amps used by rock bands. Amps make music louder, and the middle ear is just listening, it, and it sounds louder too. All right, and look at the music. That's better. Finally, the inner ear transforms those amplified sounds into nerve impulses. Those impulses are sent to the brain where they're instantly interpreted and categorized. This all happened so fast, if your brain were a video game, you would have thought you reached the seventh level of Annihilator before you even turned it on. Some computer, eh? Now, inside your ear, there are three small bumps. The malleus, the incus, and the stapes. These are commonly known as the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. Like trivia? Want to impress your friends? Well, here's an interesting fact. Where's the smallest bone in your body? It's right inside your ear, the stapes. That little stirrup thing. That's just part of my science project. I don't want to bore you with the whole report. Just give you a few basic facts on ears. But you know, I really do think ears are interesting. When I was doing this project, I also found out the middle ear is one of those places where kids have a lot of problems. Oh, let's try to link up with the docs I was talking about. I'll try Dr. Andrews first. I have his email address. We should be able to establish a visual link. That's, of course, if he's near his computer. Let's give it a try. There, that should feel a lot better. Let's just let those drops soak in a little bit. Hey, Eddie. What's up? Doc, we were just wondering if you could tell us a little about ear problems. Sure, Eddie. As you know from your science project, your ears are an especially sensitive part of your body. There's a lot that can go wrong. Your ears can be damaged by loud noises, accidents, or infections, which keep your ears from working right. In our office, we see lots of ear infections. They can be caused by bacteria or viruses. And if kids are in daycare, or if there's somebody smoking in the house, the risk of infection is increased. Have you ever gone up in an airplane and felt your ears pop when it changed to altitude? Or maybe an elevator in a tall building? That popping you feel is pressure equalizing in your middle ear. Normally, the air pressure on the outside of the ear is the same as on the inside of the ear. This pressure is maintained by the eustachian tube in your middle ear. Sometimes, though, the eustachian tube doesn't work right, and the pressure outside your ear increases to the point where it's much greater than the inside pressure. This pressure pulls fluid from the surrounding tissue and fills the middle ear. This causes a stuffed up or full feeling. If the fluid in the ear becomes infected, which it often does, it can be real painful and causes swelling, which makes it harder for the eustachian tube to open and equalize your ears. When this happens, it's a lot easier to keep getting these infections over and over again. We want our patients to feel better as fast as possible. We do whatever it takes to get the right results. Sometimes we're able to fight off those ear infections with antibiotics, but at other times, the infections keep hanging around and won't go away. When that happens, we recommend putting a tiny tube in the ear. Hey, that's what my doctor told my mom I should do, because I kept getting these bad ear infections. Your doctor was right, Eddie. These little tubes are a great invention. They keep fluid from forming in the middle ear, which helps prevent infection. It also makes you feel better immediately. But you should talk to Dr. Orabello too. He knows a lot about ear tubes. I think he's over at the hospital now. Why don't you try reaching him there? Sounds good, Doc. We'll give it a try. Thanks. OK, let's just type in the hospital's address and see if we can catch Dr. Orabello. All right, Chip. I think that'll do it. I'm just going to check my email. Hey, Eddie. What's going on? I was just talking to Dr. Andrews about ear infections, and I'm supposed to get ear tubes soon. He said he could tell me a little more about ear tubes and surgery. You bet, Eddie. I'm dressed like this because we just finished surgery a few minutes ago. We gave this nice little girl a set of tubes for her ears. It took just a few minutes, and she didn't feel a thing. Now, she probably won't have a problem with ear infections anymore. You see, that's why ear tubes are so cool. 
It's a very simple procedure that doesn't hurt, and the best part is you start feeling better and hearing better right away. So, Doc, how do these ear tubes work? Ear tubes are very, very small, about an eighth of an inch in diameter. They're so small when they're in your ears, you don't even know they're there. They help the body break the cycle of infection in the ear. These tubes let the middle ear ventilate and help maintain equal pressure with the atmosphere outside and the ear inside. And that allows fluids to drain from the ear. If there's no fluids collecting in the ear, then more than likely there won't be any infection either. How long does the surgery take? The surgery itself takes just a few minutes. The important thing is your head has to be perfectly still while we put these tiny tubes in your ear. Keeping anybody's head still for a very long time is difficult, especially if they're awake. That's why a pediatric anesthesiologist helps us by giving you a little special sleepy ear during surgery. Once you're asleep, we make a tiny incision in the eardrum. The tympanic membrane, right? That's right. And after making a little incision, we carefully place the tube through this narrow slit. Within a few minutes, the patient wakes up and goes home. It's that simple. Doc, does the surgery hurt? As far as I can tell you, there is no pain. But it's not unusual for smaller kids to be a little scared when they wake up in a strange place. But that's usually over as soon as they see someone they recognize, like mom or dad. How long will these tubes stay in my ears? Most tubes come out after six to nine months. They usually just fall out on their own. Chances are you won't even know your tubes are falling out. If for some reason the tubes stay in too long, then we can take them out with a simple procedure. Can I still swim and play sports with these tubes? Oh, sure. You just need to be a little careful after the surgery. Speaking of surgery, I've got another one scheduled in a few minutes. Why don't you give Dr. Cressman a call at our office? He can probably answer any more questions you might have. Right now, I've got another child who wants their ears fixed. I'll catch you later, Eddie. Thanks for the info, Doc. Okay, so now we know what causes ear infections, and we know a lot more about ear tubes, which seems like a great way to keep from getting more infections. Now let's talk to Dr. Cressman to see what he has to say. Looks like we've got a connection coming on. Hi, Eddie. Doing a little medical research? As a matter of fact, Doc, I am. I've been talking to Dr. Andrews and Dr. Obello about ear infections and ear tubes, and I have a couple of questions for you. Shoot. Well, I guess my first question is, how will I feel right after the surgery? As Dr. Orbello probably told you, before the surgery, the anesthesiologist gives you some special sleep air to help you fall asleep. There's no need for any shots or needles. After surgery, some kids wake up a little drowsy, but they usually feel fine within an hour. Of course, Eddie, everyone reacts a little differently to anesthesia. You might get an upset stomach and even throw up. But like I said, if you have this feeling after surgery, it goes away quickly. My parents and I need to know if there are any potential problems I could experience with this surgery. That's an excellent question, Eddie, and it's one you should ask any time you need an operation. All surgeries carry some risk. What's important to understand is that with this surgery, it has an extremely high success rate. Occasionally, some patients will have some drainage from their ears for two or three days. This fluid might be clear, reddish, or blood colored. And some patients may experience a low grade fever or even a little fuzziness as their anesthesia wears off. And also, in some kids, their hearing is improved so drastically, normal sounds can seem loud or even a bit scary. But these are relatively minor problems, especially compared with what you gain. Will I have to take any special precautions with my tubes? You know, like when I'm swimming or playing sports? Well, like after any surgery, it's always a good idea to give your body a little time to heal. But in a few days, playing sports will be just fine. And it's fine to swim, but you need to use earplugs if you're planning to go deeper than a foot. You also need to wear earplugs if you lay down in the bath and put your ears underwater. And unfortunately, while your tubes are still in, no diving. So Doc, I have all this info on ears. What do I need to know about getting ready for surgery? Good question, Eddie. But I got a patient waiting. Would you mind getting with Dr. Mancuso for that? Sure, Doc. I'll do that. Oh, and thanks for the information. Well, we have almost all the information we need. And it sounds to me like the surgery is a pretty safe bet. Let's try to hook up with Dr. Mancuso. Hopefully, he'll have a few tips on getting ready for surgery. All right, looks like he's online. 
Hey, Eddie. Let me guess. Working on another science project? Well, actually, Doc, I'm trying to find out a little more about my ears. My doctor says I'll probably need ear tubes, and after talking to your partners, I'm convinced using tubes is a great way to fight my infections. So what do I need to know about preparing for my surgery? Okay. Once a doctor recommends surgery, I believe it's very important for everyone to develop the right attitude. And a good attitude starts with understanding all the facts regarding surgery and eliminating any unnecessary fears. A lot of parents do this by discussing the operation with their child. If the child understands the procedure, we feel this often helps to avoid any problems. Now, before you have surgery, we'll provide you with a package of consent forms and information sheets regarding your procedure. It's important everyone review this information carefully and follow instructions. That way, if you have any questions, our staff is always available to help. So here are a few things that need to be completed prior to surgery. We call this our pre-op checklist. First, if you cancel your procedure, contact our surgery scheduler immediately. Also contact her right away if there's any changes to your phone numbers or insurance policy. You have to have been seen by your pediatrician two to seven days before your operation. If you've been given a prescription for lab work, make sure it's completed three to five days before surgery. You can't have had any recent vaccinations. If for some reason you develop RSV, pneumonia, bronchitis, or exposed to chickenpox, you should contact us. A pre-admission nurse from the surgical facility or hospital will contact your parents or guardians the day before the operation. This nurse will tell you when you must stop eating or drinking prior to surgery. You should not take any aspirin or ibuprofen for two weeks before your procedure. This information is very important, so be sure to follow these directions carefully. Finally, be sure to bring your history and physical form and your patient history form with you on the day of your surgery. Wow. That's a lot of info, Doc. It sure is. But remember, if you have any questions, please call us. We're always happy to help. Is there anything else for me to know? Just a few more things. As a precaution, contact our office immediately if you experience nausea or vomiting for 12 to 24 hours after the procedure. You should also call us if your ear continues to drain for more than four days after surgery, or if you have a persistent fever. The chances of these things happening are unlikely, but you can't be too careful when it comes to your health. Right, Doc. You can't be too careful, especially with my ears. So, Eddie, got everything you need? I think so. Hey, thanks a bunch, Doc. I feel a lot better, especially now that I know what's going on. See you in surgery, Doc. Okay, I think we have all the info we need. We talked about our ears and getting tubes and all about surgery. I feel good about the docs, and I know they'll take good care of me and you, too. I'll be getting my tubes real soon, so maybe I'll see you at the hospital. I can't wait to get rid of these ear infections. So what are you waiting for? Get those ears fixed and start feeling good. Hey, give me a ring. I'll be listening for you. Yeah.